Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Wisco Whiskey Review. My name is Jeff and today we're going to be taking a look at Larceny Bourbon. Now this is a Larceny standard offering. It comes in at 92 proof or 46%. Now this is uh, bottled by Heaven Hill Distilling out of Kentucky and this is an extension of their Old Fitzgerald line. So both Larceny and Old Fitzgerald were named and an homage to John E. Fitzgerald who was a bonded treasury agent back in the day at the uh, old Pappy Van Winkle Distilling Company. So he had a set of keys and the only set of keys to this warehouse and uh, he had a, a good taste for bourbon or good nose for it and uh, sometimes he, the legend goes, is that he would uh, either steal these barrels or at least you know kind of put his name on them and they were called the Fitzgerald barrels at that time. So this is going to be a small batch bourbon. Now with this specific one, the information I could find, there's 200 barrels or less per batch. Again, with small batch, there's no legal definition as far as how many barrels or how little barrels can be in a small batch. So um, it's kind of nice when the distillery kind of releases or discloses that information. This is a non-age stated, but again, from what I could find, uh, the age on this is gonna be anywhere from six to 12 year old barrels mingled together. Now, again, the the six year, you know, it doesn't take as long to age. There's more of it. You don't lose as much bourbon uh, with the angel's share either. So a lot of it's probably gonna be closer to that six year age range, but it does have up to 12 year according to the info I was given. Uh, the mash bill on this is 68% corn, 20% wheat, and only 12% malted barley. Now again, with most of your bourbons on the market today, the second ingredient is gonna be rye. So that kind of gives it more of a spicy, kind of a citrus forward. Sometimes people get mint or eucalyptus notes out of uh, high rye bourbons, but wheat tends to give it kind of a sweeter profile. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit more of the vanilla, caramel, um, sometimes oak, depending on the year. Any kind of wheat bourbon, the, the nicknames they're given are wheaters or sweet wheats. So again, a sweeter profile. Okay, so if you're not familiar with uh, my grading scale or any of the videos I've done before on these, um, I'm gonna grade these on the nose, the palate, the finish, and the value. It's gonna be a one to 10 grading scale, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest. So uh, let's get started with the nose here. Okay, so the first things I'm picking up are kind of that sweetness. Now again, it's coming off in vanilla, um, a lot of caramel, uh, some butterscotch as well. There is a little bit of a baking spice nose going on, but not nearly as much as you would find in a rye. Yeah, so your typical bourbon notes, vanilla, caramel, oak, a little bit of baking spice, but again, not as prominent in this one. You don't really smell the wheat necessarily. Um, you know, if anything, any of the grain you're probably gonna pick up on is the corn. Um, but the barrel notes kind of overpower any of the grain notes in this one. All right, so now that we've kind of uh, nosed it a little bit, let's go in for a taste. Yeah, so this one's really smooth. And I know a lot of people don't like to use the word smooth as a descriptor because it's kind of vague. Uh, it's thrown around a lot. It can mean different things to different people. I guess to me, um, the first things I'm getting on the palate you know, again, I mentioned it before, but it's that sweetness. It's kind of that sweet caramel, um, vanilla, some brown sugar. I'd like to say a little bit of maple, but not really a whole lot. It's not overpoweringly maple or anything. But yeah, just vanilla, caramel, brown sugar. Uh, let's go in for a second sip here. So the only negative thing I can say about this one so far is that the mouth feels a little thinner. Um, depending on the proof and depending if it's been non-chill filtered or not, sometimes you'll get more of a, a viscous mouthfeel with some bourbons, sometimes an oilier one. And a lot of people tend to prefer that because it just kind of coats the mouth a little bit better, uh, sticks with you a little bit longer. So this one is a little bit thinner on the mouthfeel, but again, it's, it's very smooth. Uh, it's very easy to drink. It's a, a sweet bourbon for sure. Um, there's not a ton of complexity going on. You know, you can pick out a lot of your common bourbon notes um, on the palate, but um, you know, it's, it's really, it's a pleasant bourbon and drink. I can see why it's very popular. Um, some other popular um, weeded bourbons would be like Maker's Mark, 
uh, Rebel EL100, things like that. All right, let's talk about the finish here. So again, the finish is gonna be the uh, flavors that stick around kind of after the initial flavors that you get. Um, and also the finish, I kind of graded on how long it lasts as well. Some of that's gonna come from the proof, but um, sometimes you can have some lower proof ones that uh, hang around for a while. Uh, sometimes you can have some high proof bourbons that fade away quickly. So proof doesn't always necessarily determine the finish. So let's see uh, kind of what lingers on this one. All right, so there aren't really any specific notes that I'm getting that kind of jump out or linger a little bit longer toward the end. It, it's kind of just a gradual um, decline of the flavors after you, you know, after you first taste it. Again, maybe the baking spices, you know, kind of show up a little bit toward the end, but this isn't a high rye mash bill at all. Um, those are kind of, you know, it's, it's well balanced. Um, you just still get that sweetness of the caramel, the brown sugar. Those are the things that are lasting for me. Um, but it is a shorter finish, I would say. Um, you know, short to medium short. Uh, you're not really getting a lot of things that are sticking around for too long. Okay, so now that we've nosed it, uh, tasted the palate, gone over the finish, uh, it's time to rate it. So again, from the nose, very typical bourbon notes that I got out of it. It's really not anything that's going to be different or kind of stand out. You know that if you drink a lot of different bourbons it's going to be new to you with this one um, but it did have a pleasant nose uh, it didn't quite jump out of the glass necessarily but you know what's there is pleasant um, it's kind of a softer nose i wouldn't say it's very striking i think i'm gonna have to go with a, a 6.5 on the nose here um, as far as the palate goes again kind of similar with the nose um, it's kind of your typical weeded bourbon flavors going on there there's the brown sugar, vanilla caramel. Again, not really anything new, but what it does, it does well. Um, it's sweet, easy to drink. Um, I respect that it's not just a straight 80 proof, that you know, that they added a little bit more there. So anything that's uh, 80 proof to me is sometimes almost too easy to drink or you know, kind of loses some of the complexity of the flavors. So the fact that it's uh, the 92 proof definitely helps a little bit. Um, but the palette wasn't anything mind-blowing, so I can't give it a super high score. We'll go with a, a good solid seven for this one. So the finish is probably the one thing that I wish it had a lot more of, and it just doesn't. It kind of falls a little flat as far as the finish goes. Um, you know, this being a not really complicated one, I feel like this isn't one that people are going to try to really pick out certain things or, you know, find it really nuanced. So the finish, you know, might not matter as much to some people. Uh, some people really like a nice finish on a bourbon. If you like that, this probably isn't gonna be your cup of tea. Um, I'm gonna give the finish just a kind of an average five. So the value I think is, uh, again, where this one shines pretty well. Um, you know, this is a weeder and there aren't a ton of ones out there. There are a few more coming onto the market as of late because it's been so popular with people. This is a super widely available bourbon. You can find it, I think, almost anywhere, um, you know, anywhere in the country for the most part. And it's between a $20 to $25 bottle as far as, as my research and everything's gone. Again, all my prices that I'm familiar with are you know, in the Midwest, um, primarily Southern Wisconsin. But um, you know, for the price, again, it's below 25, or at least it should be where you're at. Um, I haven't seen it any, anywhere above that, but it's just a very easy drinker, um, you know, coming from a big distillery. So I think I'm gonna have to give this one an eight for uh, value. It's just a very good, easy sipper. You could also mix with this one. I don't know if I'd normally um, prefer it unless you want a really sweet cocktail. Now usually rye is pretty common or a high rye bourbon is common in cocktails because that rye kind of cuts through some of the mixers or some of the other ingredients in a cocktail or a mixed drink. But with this one, uh, the bourbon might get a little bit lost just because of how sweet it is and without that rye kick. So that brings us to the total. Now that gives us 26.5 out of 40. Now, I'd say that's a pretty respectable score uh, for something that's you know 20 to 25 dollars. Um, you really can't go wrong with it. If you like sweeter bourbons, I'd say definitely give this a shot if you haven't had it. Um, it's one that I probably will keep on my bar at all times, or at least I'll be looking out for it again if I'm getting low. 
Uh, they also do make a barrel proof. Uh, I have a bottle right now that I've yet to open. I'll do a review on that at some point, I'm sure. And I expect that one to probably be just a lot better than this one. Um, as far as I know, it's the same mash bill, same everything. It's just going to be kind of a higher proof. So a lot more of those flavors should come through. Uh, that finish that I explained earlier was to me just kind of lacking. That should probably be a little bit longer, a little bit stronger of a finish as well. So um, I'm expecting that one to score quite a bit higher than this one. But for an everyday sipper, you know, you can't really go wrong with this one at all. So that's going to be it. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. Uh, if you did like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to get more uh, reviews out every single week. So um, again, thanks for sticking by and uh, hope you guys have a good day. All right, cheers.